Hello, everybody. You're on the mic. And on today's episode, we're going to wrap up the voice profiles I've been doing on, you know, some of the comic book characters that got translated, you know, that got, that became cartoons. Today, we're going to focus on Marvel Comics superhero, Marvel Comics hero, um, Namor, Namor McKenzie, better known to most fans as Namor the Submariner. The King of Atlantis in the Marvel Universe. Basically, Aquaman's um, counterpart in the Marvel Universe. So, without no further ado, let's get started then. So, as with a few, as with, a, uh, with many of the others that we talked about this week, and last, um, in the latter part of last week, um, Namor, along with Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, and the Hulk, made made his animated debut on in 1966 on the Marvel superheroes show produced by Grant Way Lawrence um, animation Namor was voiced by John Vernon who you know Namor of course was on the Friday segments of the series he was voiced by John Vernon who also voiced Iron Man Tony Stark um, on that series as well as later on going on to voice Rupert Thorne in Batman the Animated Series in the 90s. Moving ahead one year to 1977, um, as Grant Way Lawrence had already licensed the character Submariner um, in 1966, Hanna-Barbera used a very, basically used an alter, a variation of the character calling him Prince Triton. Um, in which he appeared in two episodes, not Namor himself, but his all, you know, an alternate version of himself in the 1967 Hanna-Barbera Fantastic Four cartoon. He, he made a couple, um, had our, you know, had, since he, since Submariner had already been licensed by Grantway Lawrence, um, they replaced him with the character Prince Triton, who would appear in the episodes Demon of the Deep and Danger in the Depths, which were based, of course, on Fantastic um, Fantastic Fours number four and number 33, respectively. Prince Triton, um, Hanna-Barbera's variation on, sub, on the Submariner, was voiced by Mike Rode, who was well known for his work throughout the Hanna Barbera superhero cartoons, and most notably as Xandor of the Herculoids. Then moving ahead, of course, into the 1980s, 1981, in the solo Spider Man series in the episode Wrath of the Submariner, Vic Perrin, who, um, who of course would voice Sinestro and Super Friends, would voice the Submariner in this episode, in which Submariner attacks um, New York City in response to the pollution done by Kingpin. Okay, so also in, in the early 80s, Namor the Submariner made an appearance on Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends um, as well in the episode Seven Little Superheroes. Joined, of course, by Spider-Man and Spider-Friends, Captain America, Shauna the She-Devil, and Doctor Strange, in which he was voiced by William Woodson, who also voiced Doctor Strange in the episode. William Woodson, probably most note, note, um, noted for his work on the Super Friends cartoon as the narrator and other and additional voices. Namor would return to animated form in 1994, guest-starring on an episode of the 1994 series Fantastic Four as part of the Marvel Action Hour in the episode Now Comes the Submariner, vo voiced by James Warwick. Um, I think I can find some work that he was probably... Yeah. I don't know much beyond that, um, I see, but 
and moving forward about to probably the 1999, Namor would of course make make um, an appearance on the on the animated show The Avengers United They Stand, the episode To Rule Atlantis, where he was voiced by Raul Trujillo. And in 2006, he would he would come back to the Fantastic Four, the world's great, you know, he would come back to guest star on the episode Imperious Rex for Fantastic Four, World's Greatest Heroes, and Atlantis Attacks, voiced by Michael Adam, Adam Thwaite, who probably one of his more well-known roles, of course, was as Colossus in X-Men Evolution. And then Namor would also appear in 2013 in the Inhumans motion comic voiced by veteran Canadian voice actor Trevor Duvall. So those are basically all of um, Namor's animated appearances. All right, with, with all that out of the way here, Okay, with all that out of the way here, um, today being July the 24th, 2020, let's look back on this day in Nietzsche history. Um, so first off, um, first off, we go back 15 years ago to 2005, in which, the, in which from the HSBC Arena in Buffalo, New York, uh, WWE held the, it, its second annual um, Great American Bash event from from Buffalo, New York. Of course, taking taking on the title or taking on the event name from as part of the 2001 purchase they had of WCW. As most most of you know, the Great American Bash was originally a property of of the NWA Mid Atlantic Territory, which eventually became WCW. Which the WWE, of course, picked up from um, WCW when they made the purchase in 2001. So this was the second annual um, Great American Bash event that the WWE held. Um, this one was from Buffalo, New York, from the HSBC Arena. And on the event, of course, in the main event, um, Batista re re um Batista would retain the the World Heavyweight Championship, but he would still lose a match on a disqualification again, you know, fending off um, JBL. JBL would win the match, but not the title, as Batista would disqualify in the main event. Among some of the other matches, um, some of the other big matches on the night included Molina defeating Tori Wilson in a bra and panties match with Candice Michelle as special guest referee. Um, the Undertaker beating um, Muhammad Hassan, Orlando Jordan retaining the United States um, have, uh, United States Championship from Chris Benoit, um, the Legion of Doom. This combination of Legion of Doom being Heidenreich and World Warrior Animal defeating um, M and M, Joey Mercury and Johnny Nitro um, for the WWE Tag Team Championship. And then on on the on the pre-show on the Sunday Night Heat pre-show, Paul London retaining his cruiserweight championship against Nunzio. So on this date 15 years ago, which um, the SmackDown SmackDown hosted event, um, Great American Bash from the Buffalo Arena, from the HSBC Arena um, in Buffalo, New York. Okay, moving ahead to 2007, two years from the point we were just at, as well as 13 years ago from today. On this date in 2007, um, the, the Hollywood premiere of The Simpsons took place at the Westwood Village on this date in 2007. The Hollywood premiere of The Simpsons took place at the Westwood Village on this date 13 years ago in 2007. Then, um, also, um, so 
Okay, moving ahead now to 2010, 10 years ago from today, three years from where we just last went off. Um, on this date in 2010, the full version of the um, of the OVA Black Black Rock Shooter was released on this date in in bundled DVDs um, on this date in 2010. On this date in 2010, the full version of the OVA Black Rock Shooter was released on this date in 2000, 2010. And one year ago today, on this date, um, on this date in 2019, in the It's So Nice, It's Gotta Be Done Twice category, um, and we did the same, okay, on this date, one year ago today, Betty and Veronica Jumbo Comet Double Digest number 275 was released on the newsstands by Archie Comics. Um, on this date one year ago today. One year ago today, Betty and Veronica, Jumbo Comics Double Digest number 275 was released on this date one year ago today. So, and with all that being said, if you guys would like to contact me directly, my, my, you can direct message me on my Discord. My link, Discord link is down in the link section. You can check out the Discord and join if you'd like. Um, I'm still, of course, promoting a bunch of different dub companies. I'm also still promoting Vic's GoFundMe. As always, guys, never feel like you have to donate. If it's on your heart to do so, you have the means to do so, please consider donating. If you've already donated, please consider donating again. And if you cannot donate, you can still help out the cause by sharing the link. Because sharing is caring. You never know. Maybe somebody in your circle of friends may want to um, help out. doesn't hurt to ask. And if you like this content, I ask that you please like, share, comment, and subscribe. To the, subscribe. But look forward to the conversation with you guys. As long as it's civil and respectful, I usually will get back to you. And don't forget also that later on tonight will be my next VA profile premiere in which I will be... Um, Highlighting the career of Canadian-born um, voice actress Shiara Zani. Um, I'll be, you know, most notable for her work on Inuyasha as 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 the English voices of Yura of the Hair, as well as the Infant and Hagodoshi. Um, also, I will be. Um, I will be, um, also don't forget my next, my, my next live stream will be this Sunday. I hope to see you guys there. I will have a special announcement in regards to my channel. So I hope to see you all there. And until, uh, and hopefully, if, hopefully I'll see you guys at the premiere and or the live stream. If not, I will see you on Monday. Bye.